part, I talk about electric charge and Coulomb's law. I want to review a concept that you guys are probably familiar with, and that is force. What is force? Mass times acceleration. Okay, so there's a, there's a law that says force is equal to mass times acceleration. Look how you that up there. But what is force? What does force tell us? If I give you a force, what would you use that force to do? Okay. Okay, forces do work, and when you're doing work on an object, what's that object doing? Moving. Moving. So forces tell us how things move. That's why we care about forces. So you see over here, MA, this is mass times acceleration. So if you're given the force and you know the mass of the object, you can solve the acceleration. Right, this is called mean second law. All right, some things I want to add is, um, that force is a vector, so I'm going to put this little sign on top of it to remind ourselves that it is a vector. What is a vector? How is a vector different from other numbers? Yeah, so it has a magnitude and a direction. So really what I wrote here was two equations. Really this is the x component. Instead of writing two equations, as physicists we get lazy and we just put a little vector sign to say, oh yeah, there's two. Vectors aren't so bad, right? There's one other thing missing from Newton's second law. Does anybody know what it is? This symbol here, what does this symbol mean? It means to sum. So it means that the sum of the forces is equal to mass and acceleration. So there could be more than one force on an object. Okay. So if I put this chalk on this desk, what type of forces are acting on the chalk? Gravity is pushing down on it, right? So if we only had gravity, would it be moving? Yeah. So there's a force, there's a net force on it. But there's another force. What's the other force acting on it? The normal force pushing out. So the normal force is canceling out. So the sum of them equals zero. So therefore, the chalk is not. So don't forget that there's a sum here. You need the sum of all the forces acting on the chalk. Any questions so far? All right, what are some forces that we know? You already named two. Force of gravity and the normal force. Force of friction, good. Okay, the electric force which we're going to talk about today, which is the Coulomb force. Centripetal. Centripetal, which is, let's see again. Centripetal force. So we know a lot of forces, right? So, sort of the journey as a young physicist, okay, your educational journey, is a lot of learning about a lot of different forces. So we're kind of just going through all the forces that we know, and that way we can figure out how things move. Because if you didn't know the electric force existed, then all of a sudden the things that are electric and moving are mysterious to you, right? But if you know how things move, you know the electric force, you can predict how they're going to move. All right, so there's many types of forces. And the force we're going to talk about today is the electric force. start out with the law of Paula Abdul. You're going to have to expand on that. Who is Paula Abdul? Straight up. Yeah, he remembers. <laughs> so Paula Abdul, famous singer, uh, she said that opposites attract. What does that mean 
lucky for us. It means that if we had a charge over here, a positive charge, and another charge, a negative charge over here, that since this charge is the opposite of this charge, that they should attract, which means that there should be a force between them, pushing them together. And that force is the electric force, since these guys are charged. And likewise, like charges repel. That's great, that tells us the direction of the force. That brings us to Coulomb's law. Coulomb's law says the force. I'm going to put a little C there, that stands for. constant K, charge 1, and charge 2, all over R squared. Right, well Q stands for charge. All right, we didn't use C. C is actually already taken for something else. Uh, and so we're going to use Q. What's R? That's the distance between the two objects. So if you have a charge here, and another charge, you get a minus charge here. The distance between them is R. Alright, so what happens if the distance gets larger? You pull the objects apart. What happens to the force between them? Yeah, it decreases because as R gets bigger, 1 over R squared gets really small. The force gets really Question? Yeah, why is it that you use Q1, Q2, and the class she used absolute value Q1 times absolute value Q2? All right, yeah. So that's a good question. So I did not use absolute values, and the reason is because I want to have the law of Hall Abdul inside Coulomb's law. So if Q is positive, and this Q is positive, a positive times a positive is a positive. And so what should these objects do? Get an overall positive sign. Right. Okay. Right. They should have repel. Yeah. So about what you did with the absolute values, I was just doing it as a magnitude. Right. So you the magnitude. So I'm going to not do the magnitude. I'm going to give you the magnitude and the direction of this equation. All right. And so if one of these is the minus, right, and it's uh, oppositely charged, and one of them is positively charged, you get an overall minus sign. And that minus sign means that they're attracting. Right. But one of the things I can do is add the vector sign. Unit vector r hat. R hat gives me the direction, it's the radial direction. So if I get a minus sign here and I can pull the minus sign over here, then I get the minus radial direction. So this is the complete Coulomb's law vector form. Oh, okay. if you're only concerned about the magnitude, the magnitude of this guy is 1. Oh. You get rid of the vector sign. And then you put magnitudes on these guys. Okay, so the r gives like the direction. In any direction. Yeah, so it'll give you the positive radial direction or the negative radial direction. Okay. A lot of times you're only concerned with magnitude, that's fine. You don't have to worry about the minus sign. Any other questions? So I didn't tell you what K is. K, it turns out, is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught. This is just writing it in terms of another constant called epsilon naught. I think it's called the permeativity of free space. So permittivity and permeability, I was getting confused. And K is, happens to be equal to 8.99 times 10 to the 9 Newton meters squared. Right, so you need that for doing calculations. What is the symbol after classic? It's a uh, uh, 
three letter called epsilon and there's a little zero, a zero, epsilon naught. Any other questions? All right, what does this, does this remind you of anything? It's a lot of gravitation. Yeah, Newton's universal law of gravity. So let's remind ourselves of that. So the main difference between Coulomb's law and gravity is two things. The constant's different. This is 10 to the 9, and this is 10 to the minus 11. So this guy is 10 to the 9, this guy is 10 to the minus 11. This guy is much bigger than this guy. What does that tell us about electric forces? They're much stronger, much, much stronger. That's interesting. The other thing is that in electric, in electric forces and electric charges, the charges can be positive or negatively charged. And there is no negative masses. So what does that mean for gravity? It's only attractive. Yeah, it's only attractive. That's why I put the minus sign here. So if these guys are positive, the minus sign gives us a minus radial direction. So it's only attractive. Questions? Alright, so some things you might need are the mass of an electron. Anybody know the mass of an electron? I always have to look So, M sub is the mass of an electron, it's 9.109 times 10 negative 31 kilograms, so it's very light. And then the charge of the electron So 
this is enough information to complete the first half of the lab. So if you look inside your uh, lab manuals, you'll see um, some questions. First couple of questions will be asking you to compare electric force to Newton's law of gravity. And the moral of the story is that Coulomb force is much stronger. And you'll do some explicit calculations showing that. And I'll also ask you to play this game called electric field hockey. So it's kind of just a fun little game. It's on your computer. You set up charges, and you see another charge move in response to where you put other charges. So if you put a positive charge, then the negative charge is going to be attracted to the positive charge, right? So you can try to score goals by you know, distributing charges. So I'm going to let you guys get started on that. And then about 30 or 40 minutes in, I'm going to stop you guys so that I can lecture on what you guys need to know for the second half of the lab, which is the tape part. All right, so you guys get started.